Oh, okay. So from negative 3 to negative 1 is 2, right? How far is it from negative 1 to 0? 1. And how far is it from 0 to 3? Three? 3. So now, when I try to figure my rate of change, okay, I can still do it using my slope, but if I'm going to do this just at one shot, I have to do it where the difference is only one day or one whatever, all right? So negative 5 to 1, negative 1 is how much? 4. So I'm thinking my, my slope or my rate of change is going to be 4 over 1, which would just be 4. Now here, where, it's, where x increased by 2, y increased by 8, didn't it? So isn't 8 divided by 2 also 4? And then down here, when y was negative 1, and it got up to 11, that's an increase of how much? 12. 12. So what is 12 divided by 3? Because we had 3, so that would be 4, right? So our rate of change is going to be 4, no matter how we do that. We could also do it with our rise over run idea, right? So that would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so it doesn't matter which one we call which. So let's call the 3, the negative 3, x1, y1. And let's call this one. And it doesn't matter which other point I use. So I'm just going to the last one, call it x2, y2. Now I'm going to plug that into my formula. So what's y2? 11. y2 is 11 minus what is y1? Negative 13 over what's x2? Minus what is x1? Negative 3. So cross the line, change the sign. Anytime we subtract a negative, it's like adding a positive. Cross the line, change the sign. So what's 11 plus 13? 24. What's 3 plus 3? 24. What's 24 divided by 6? Son of a gun, it's 4. <laughs> we got it.